Hello and welcome folks to my rather early Extreme Battler deck profile. So I did get my stuff a little bit early and I thought I'd show off this cool ass Shin Chan deck box that I use for my Nova Grapplers, but yes, Extreme Battlers are really really nice post BTO6 and I'm going to be giving you a quick deck profile to show you what the deck is all about. So I did say in a previous video that I would immediately do the Japanese layout of deck profiles for this one, but for this one I'm still going to go with my old way, and for the next one you'll see the Japanese way of deck profiling, because I had some people tell me not to do it, so I went like, okay, I'll do this the usual way, and I'll do the next one the different way. <laughs> Alright, so, let's get in, I'll move away the G-Zone first, and we can, we can see I have good taste in sleeves, don't I? Mmm, mmm, sexy. So I'll move away the G-Zone for now, and we'll begin with the Great Threes, first of which is Extreme Battler Victor. So Victor has two skills, his first is a GB2, when he attacks he gets plus 5k, and he can stand a rearguard and give it plus 5k. His on strike skill is to counter must 1 when the Vanguard attacks, and stand a rearguard and give it plus 5k until end of turn. So he's a really good card that when you stride he just makes a lot of nice combos with some of your Great Twos, and we play him as a 4 of because he is the main Great Three of the deck. Now my secondary grade 3 I'm sure some people won't agree with and that is Crystal Devil and I only play 3 of him. First let me go over a skill and then I'll explain why I play him. So Crystal Devil has two skills. His second skill is when you ride him you can almost 1 and soul west 1. If you do you choose one of your rearguards and give it the skill that at the end of the battle it attacks you stand and give it plus 2k. Meaning that you have a bit of an early push before you go into GB into G break. So I like that little early push that it gives you, so that's what the second skill is. His first skill is when he attacks a vanguard, you can count us one if you're in GB1. If you do, you stand one of your rearguards and you stand one of your rush rearguards and give it the skill that at the end of the battle that attacks a unit it at the at the end of the battle that attacks a vanguard, you can stand it again. So you not we don't play that many rush units in the deck, but we do play a certain trigger that gives rush to one of your units, so that's why I play Crystal Devil, he's a nice backup grade 3, but most of the time you will, you will ride into Victor, but Crystal Devil can also be nice, and I do quite like him. Moving on to the grade 2s, we do have the MVP of the deck, Sazanda. So Sazanda's skill is quite simple, when he's, when he's on GB1 and he stands due to the effect of one of your cards, he gets plus 5k until end of turn, so every time you stand him he gets plus 5k, so there's already like Victor giving him plus 5k when he stands him, so he gets plus 5k from his own skill, so when he gets stood by Victor, so he'll get plus 10k already, so that's just an example of what you can do with him, but he's a very very key card, and he's the, like when the opponent sees Sazanda, they'll often panic. Another great 2 that we've had since the start in here is Cool Hank. So Cool Hank is the Amber clone of Nova Grappler, so when he's boosted and he attacks the Vanguard and you're in GB1 and you can count almost 1, if you do you stand one of your rearguards and give it plus 5k until end of turn, so Again, you can stand Sazanda to give it plus 5k from this skill, and it'll also get plus 5k from its own skill, making it 19k. And don't forget that these effects are until end of turn, so if you, let's say, stand with Cool Hank and it's on 19k, and then you stand with Victor, then it'll be at 29k, so it does keep on stacking. Now, one of the new grade twos that we have is Extreme Battler Arbor Rail. Arbor Rail is the Glimmer Breath clone for the deck, and his skill is, when you call him, you can count plus 1 and soul plus 1 if your vanguard is a victor, and you're in GB1. If you do until end of turn, he gets plus 2k, and when he attacks, he can stand one of your rearguards and give it plus 5k until end of turn. So he's similar to Cool Hank, except it's just a once, like, you'll only be able to do this skill once, and it doesn't have to be boosted, and he's an enemy attacker on his own. So there's, there are a few differences, and I really like him, and like, just look at that art. It's so, so, so nice. Like, you can see, if you look at it carefully, you can see that there's a little person inside the, the cockpit there, so I really really like this art and generally some of the new Extreme Battlers have amazing art, so... Moving on to the Grade 1s, we have the new MVP of the deck, which is Malayaki. Malayaki is an improved final wrench. Has a skill on GB1 if your Vanguard is a victor. All units in the same column as this unit get a rush ability. When they stand to an effect of one of one of your units, of one of your cards, it'll get another skill until end of turn, where when that unit attacks a Vanguard, you can choose two units and give it plus give them plus 4k. So, let's just take a quick like situation, for example. So let me just move these away. Let's say I have Malayaki and Sazanda. So let's say, we attack with Sazanda, and then Sazanda stands. Then Malayaki's skill will give him the skill that when he attacks again, he will give two other units plus 4k. So let's say we attack with him again, and he gave two units plus 4k. 
Now let's say he got stood again by another effect. And now he attacks again. Maliaki's skill has been proc twice, meaning he's gonna give plus 4k four times. I explained this in the combo video, explain this in the set breakdown, but I thought I would point it out again. Maliaki is super good, and the effect does stack in the way that I have described, and it has been confirmed by Bushiroad as well, so Maliaki is a super super good card, and I really recommend running it as a 4 of, because it is just that good. Next up, pretty self-explanatory, four Stride Fodders. I have two signed ones and two that are not, so I'm a bit of a pleb, but only a half pleb. So four Stride Fodders to search for victors and to help us with striding, because this deck does need to stride a lot. And my two of slot goes to Kuma the Destroyer. So how Kuma works is that it's a, it's similar to Sazanda, but slightly different. It's a rush ability when it stands due to an effect of one of your cards on GB1. It gets the ability that when it attacks, it gets plus 5k until the end of that battle. So not until the end of the turn, but until the end of that battle. So it's a bit of a backup to Sazanda, but not as great. But it's still fairly good. I still like it quite a bit. So I think the two slot, you can either put in Raja Damnon Kid, or this, or Energy Charger, whatever you prefer. Or if you can come up with a better tech, then you can do that. Finally, four PGGs, you do counter blast quite a bit in this deck, so that's why we play the PGGs. For the trigger lineup, I only play three crit. Now trigger lineup in in the victor deck is really hard because I saw one victor deck that topped with six draw, six stand, because you need the draws to draw into all your combo pieces and the stands because they're OP. And so, but I chose to still play three crits. This is the victor crit. When your vanguard with victor attacks, you can put him in the soul, draw a card and give your vanguard plus 5k. So those are my crits. I could play the unflipper, but for now, I think I'll play this one because I do like the draw skill. Now, we play five stands, three of the new guy, which is Perfect Referee 2.99. Let me quickly go over his skill. So, his skill is, it's an act once per turn. It doesn't cost anything, but it's on GB1. You choose one of your units and give it the rush ability that when that unit stands due to an effect of one of your cards, it gets an ability that when it attacks a vanguard, it gets plus five cancel in that battle, and then the stand goes back to deck. So basically, is just pumping all your units by even more. So you give, let's say you can give Sazanda this ability and you'll get an additional plus five. So you can keep on pumping it and the plus five is quite nice. You can give it to the Arbor Rail as well when it's an 11k attacker, making it a restanding 16k attacker. So there's quite a few combos that you can do with this and I really like this stand, but the other stand is pretty good and that is Energy Girl. So, how Energy Girl works is when she boosts, at the end of the battle that she boosted, you can, you can, it's a GB1 ability, you choose one of your rear guards and stand it, and she goes back to the deck. So basically, she's just another restander. She doesn't give a 5k, but she does make your rear guard restand, so that's pretty good. I play four draws, two different ones, because I couldn't find four Schneeregen. Uh, this art is really nice, though. But yeah, four draws to draw into our resources. I would, I don't know, I'm tr testing four draws for now, and I found it pretty good. Four heals, self-explanatory, and finally we have Run Bowl. I'll go over skill if you haven't seen it already. So basically, when a unit in the same column as him stands while you're on GB1, he also stands. So let's say if I swing with a Sazanda and then the Sazanda stands, then the Run Bowl will stand as well. So he's really good just for attacks and non-stop aggression. He's, in my opinion, the better Extreme Battler starter. The other one is good as well, the one that stands your rearguards, but I like this one for the reusability and the non-stop pressure. Now, for the G-Zone, we play four of the brand new G-Unit, Meteo Kaiser Victor. His skill is actually really good. He's a Persona act, all you do is Persona, no other cost. He has two skills. One, when he attacks a Vanguard and it hits, you can choose one of your guys standing and give it plus 5k. And another GB3 skill, which when it attacks a Vanguard and it doesn't need to hit, just when it attacks, you can stand one of your guys and give it plus 5k. So basically, when you attack, you stand a rear guard, and then if you hit, you stand another one. But because if you're striding on Victor, what you'll be doing is, let's say you stride into Victor, you can use Victor's skill to stand a rear guard, and then use this Victor skill to stand another one, and then if you hit, you can stand a third one. And chances are you'll be standing one, one of those rear guards will also be a run ball, so it'll stand itself anyway. So I recommend checking out my combo video, I'll link it in the description on how to maximize this, this stride. And I will have a very long combo video coming fairly soon, so stay tuned for that. That's why I'm not showing too many combos in this video, but I will show off some of the really good combos of this deck pretty soon. All right, going into the final G units, we play two Victoplasma. Victoplasma's skill 
is Candlebus 2 and Persona. It's an X skill. If the number of you, your face up G units is two or more, it loses one drive check. And the skill that the end of battle that attack, you can discard two cards and restand it. And you can only do this once. So it's a restander. The deck doesn't actually have Vanguard restanders apart from this because I don't play risers in this anymore. That's a separate deck. But I think it is a good, good stride to have as two because the Candlebus 2 it does quite hurt the deck. So I prefer to just have this as a two of and stride into it when I really need to go for the end game pressure. We play one Tri-Brute. Tri-Brute has a good field control skill. When one of your rearguards stands due to the effect of one of your cards, you can count on us one. If you do, that unit gets plus 2k, and then you can choose one of your opponent's rearguards with power less than that unit that just stood and retire it. So it gives field control to Nova Grappler, but you have to count on us one for each unit that you retire, basically. But there are some matchups like against Dimension Police you want to retire Laurels and there's some other decks that you do like against Chaos you want to retire the starter and stuff like that so there's there's quite a lot of different matchups where you would definitely try this in. I see a lot of people not playing this and I question why because I think it's a very good stride for the field control and yeah so final stride is the one they usually go into first which is Vic 10. Vic 10 skill is when its attack hits a vanguard, you stand one of your guards and give it plus 5k. Simple, it's like uh, Victor's um, normal skill, but it's you don't have the GB3 on top, so it's pretty good for a first stride. Like you, the, your first stride will be one of these two basically. If you're up against something that really has a pesky rear guard that you need to get rid of, you'll go into Tri Brute. Um, and if you're up against anything else, you go into Vic 10 for the pressure and try to restand and already do a lot of pressure on your very first try turn. So I think that's pretty important for this deck. And then basically after your first try, you go into Victor, and then you can go into another Victor or Victor Plasma, etc. So I really like this stride lineup. It's actually like definitely the one I would keep. There is a new stride coming in Fighters Collection and I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet because it requires a full field. And this deck doesn't really want a full field all the time. It would rather have three to four rear guards instead. So that's pretty much it for the G-Zone. So, that pretty much sums it up for the Extreme Battler deck profile. Tell me what you guys think. I really, really like this deck. It's probably my favorite of GB206. Like, I really like Grand Blue as well, but I don't play it, but I like how it plays. And, but this is definitely such a fun deck. If you want to pick up a fun deck that has a ton of combos, and it's actually not that expensive in my opinion, because the Victor Stride right now is about 15, but it's going to drop for sure because it's it's good, but it's not good enough for 15, I think. Victor is generally quite cheap. Everything, like, there's a lot of commons. Cool Hank is fairly, just like a fiver. This is a rare, rare, rare common. Perfect guards, obviously. You can play the common perf, you can play the unflipper crit instead of the double rare. You don't have to. So common, 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 common. Triple rare, triple rare, double, and a rare. So it is a pretty it's a like if you're not on a very high budget you could actually build this and I don't know if you would even exceed a hundred dollars actually because I think it, it can actually be pretty cheap I mean one of my victors is SP and I really wish I had a secret one but sadly there were not in stock when I ordered all my singles but if I do if I do get one like if you have one I'm actually interested but yeah victor is it's a it's a fairly cheap deck and it's very good and it's definitely a ton of fun like, I, I, I can definitely tell you that this deck is super fun to play, and I really recommend that you try it out. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Tell me again what you guys think about the deck. Would you change any of the trigger lineup? Because I have a bit of problems with that. I think the grade 1s are pretty much set apart from this, could be interchanged. The grade 2s are really solid. The backup grade 3, I know people will disagree with this, but I really like it myself. And the 4 victor, that's self-explanatory. So... That's pretty much it for the Extreme Battler deck profile. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.